Good evening, everyone. It's time to get back in God's Word and see just a moment what He has to tell us today and what He's been telling us all down through the years. But many of us have not listened. And I want you to think about before also how many years ourselves have we wasted or did we waste before Jesus Christ became our Savior? And think about how He loved us all through those years. But yet He loved us enough to go to Calvary's cross and die for our sins that we could have life and have it more abundantly and that we could have a greater desire to live for Him and for Him. In the great book of Psalms 119, And I'm going to start reading this time in verse 29. Our most kind and gracious Heavenly Father and blessed Lord Jesus. Hence again we come to you to thank you for another opportunity that you give us to sit down and get into your word just a few minutes. And I pray, O oh Lord, you anoint these lips of clay that they may speak to people's understanding. And help us all draw closer to you and give us a strong desire to walk with you and for you and walk in your commandments. Lord, I pray you pour out your spirit today on each listener that they can feel you from the top of their head to the soles of your feet. Because, Lord, you're the same wherever they are to where I'm sitting right here. And, Lord, I pray, O Lord, it you help us, Lord, have a greater and stronger desire to listen to your word and not to follow man. Because, Lord, we cannot follow man, we go astray. But, Lord, we must follow you and help us have that understanding today. We won't forget to give you the praise for it all. In Jesus' name, we do pray, and amen. Now, this is a Psalm to David. And if you got your Bible, turn with me and read along with me. Because sometimes I mispronounce a word. Several years ago, I had a mini stroke, and it affected my speech just a little bit. But yet, I don't let that stop me. Because I'm going to keep pressing on. Regardless what my family might say or my loved ones, my friends might say. Because I've got to answer to God and not to them. Therefore, I want my walk to be good with the Lord. I want Him to be pleased with me. Psalms 119. In verse 29, remove from me the way of lying and grant me thy law graciously. In other words, he is asking the Lord to move from him lying. He didn't want to be called a liar. He didn't want to be a liar, but he wanted to tell the truth of the gospel. Thirty, I have chosen the way of the truth. Thy judgments have I laid before me, which is his word. His word is the only truth we have. Man are twisted around every way, make it look good in their own eyes, make themselves look good before others. But God's word is the truth. 
And if we don't accept God's word, then we're not accepting the truth. Jesus Christ is truth, and he is the living word from the beginning to the end. 31, I have stuck unto thy testimonies, O Lord, put me not to shame. Help me to remember your words, that I won't be ashamed with what he is talking about. How close have we stuck to his words, to his precepts, to his testimonies, and he left and gave us. 32, I will run the way of thy commandments. When thou shalt enlarge my heart, the Lord has to help us. He has to walk with us. Not only does he walk with us, he talks to us through his word. And those that say they never have heard the Lord talk to them, then they don't read the word because he is a living word. He can also speak verbally. But no one else will hear when he speaks to us. But he also speaks to our hearts through his word. And if we don't hear the word, we are not hearing him. 33. Teach me, O Lord, the way of thy statute, and I shall keep it unto the end. He was a making a covenant. He was with the Lord. He made a vow to serve the Lord when he said these words. Teach me, O Lord, the way of thy statutes, and I shall keep it unto the end. That was a vow. We are not to make a vow to God and not keep it. If we do, one day we may pay a great price. We don't want to pay. So let's be careful, my friend, what we say to each other. They may be our enemies, but that's all right too. God knows what to do. All we have to do is repent and ask God to forgive them. And that clears us up. But the repentance has to come from our heart, not just from words only. 34. Give me understanding, and I shall keep thy law. Yea, I shall observe it with my whole heart, not halfway, but his whole heart. Do we observe the Lord's word or just part of it? It's either whole with the Lord or it's not at all. Because we cannot serve the Lord halfway. We serve him all the way or we don't. It's just that plain and that simple. 35. Make me to go in the path of thy commandments. For therein do I delight. He was praying. He was asking God to help him and telling him, telling God that he delighted in his words. Do we delight in his words? All we do, do we just read over them and discard them? We better keep them to our heart, in our heart and ask God to help us every day of our life because every day we're going to face trials and troubles and struggles that we have to walk through and we can't make it without Him being with us and walking with us, in us and through us. 36, incline my heart unto thy testimonies and not to covetous, wishing, craving something someone else has or something somebody else owns. I've heard it all my life. I wish I had what he's got. 
I've heard it all my life. That's covetous, wishing for something that belongs to somebody else. No matter how big or simple it might be. 37. Turn away my eyes from beholding vanity. Don't let me see the thing that's no profit that is empty. And quicken thou me in thy way. Quicken me. Make me alive unto your word, to your testimonies, that I may receive them as I should. A lot of us need to learn some of these prayers. Look in these prayers like David, all them other old prophets wrote. I think if we would, we'd all be a little bit stronger than we are today. 38. Establish thy word unto thy servant. David was his servant. He still prayed. He asked God, ask the Lord, establish thy word unto thy servant, who is devoted to thy fear, that know what God could do. What God had able to do, that was what he feared. Because he, he knew that the Lord could remove him and put him anywhere he chose. Therefore he feared, feared the Lord. He is afraid to not keep his commandment. Are we afraid to keep his commandments? Do we fear the Lord and pray not to speak his word and truth wherever it might be? If they run us off, still speak the truth, speak God's word. If they hang us from the highest tree, still speak God's word and speak of his love while we're hanging, dangling there with a rope around our neck. Because the Lord knows how to take us on home to glory. 39. Turn away my reproach, which I fear. He was afraid he would do something wrong. He was afraid he'd go astray. So he said, Turn away my reproach, which I fear, for thy judgments are good. Lord, because your judgments are good, the way you have told me to go is good. And I don't want to miss them. This is what David wants to say through his prayer as we look deeper into it. Forty, behold, I have longed after thy precept. Quicken me in thy righteousness. Not man's righteousness, but God's righteousness. Man's, right, man's righteousness ain't nothing. But God's righteousness is all. In all. Everything we need is in God's righteousness. 41. Let thy mercies come also unto me. O Lord, even thy salvation according to thy word. You keep your word with me. Let thy mercies come also unto me. O Lord, even thy salvation. Have we experienced the Lord's salvation today? I hope we all have. Forty two, so shall I have wherewith to answer him that reproach me, for I trust in thy word, that I may be able to answer the one that questions me about the Lord, whether I'm saved or not, about my salvation, that we can tell him, I can tell him my salvation is in the Lord and not in man. 
Because as far as I trust in thy word, how much do we trust his word? And I'm afraid there are many in churches today that is putting on a show. It's time for people to quit playing church and get serious about serving the true and the living God. The church house is a gathering place where we go to, go to to worship together and get more strength to carry the word of God on through the remainder of the week. In other words, it's about like a filling station. You stop at a filling station, put gas in your car so you can go a few more, more miles. So we go. That's what the church is, the filling station, where we can go and get fed to take us on through a few more days. If the Lord lets us linger and stay here a while longer. Forty three and take not thy word, not the word of truth, utterly out of my mouth. Now listen, I'm gonna read this again. Forty three and take not the word of tru truth utterly out of my mouth, for I have hoped in thy judgment. God's judgment. He rested. His hope was in God's judgment because he knew they were right and good, and he believed God. He believed what the Lord told him. And when he's directing his path, how to walk and how to serve him. And how we could have eternal life. Forty-four. So shall I keep thy law continually forever and ever. In other words, as long as he lived, he was going to keep God's word. How many times have we said we're going to keep God's word and failed? But he get forgave us through and by his mercy and his great love he had for us. Forty-five, and I will walk at liberty. Liberty is free. Walk at liberty. For I seek thy precepts. 46. I will speak of thy testimonies also before kings and will not be ashamed. He was talking... But the king was the highest up. The king could have anybody put to death that he chose. He could do anything with them that he wanted to do. But he said, I will not be ashamed. And I will delight myself in thy commandments which I have loved. But he also said, I will speak of thy testimonies also before kings and will not be ashamed. And I will delight myself in thy commandments which I have loved. He would delight himself in the commandments of the Lord. Why? Because the Lord's commandments guided him right and kept him from many hurts and dangers along the way. What's wrong? We can't see the same thing. How the Lord has helped us down through the years when it felt like our world had fallen apart. But the Lord yet saw us through it. And how many of us have failed to thank Him and give Him praise for the things He has delivered us from and through. Forty-eight, my hands also will I lift up unto thy commandments, blood, 
and I will meditate in thy statutes. I meditate in your word, what you have told me. I will think about them. I will ponder them, and I'll take them to heart, what you've told me, your commandments, because I know you will leave me right. This is what David was meaning through this prayer. And notice he praised God as much as he prayed for things for himself. How many of us thank him when we open our eyes in the morning? When we sit down at a meal through the day? When we hear good news that somebody got saved? And somebody were baptized. How many of us rejoice? How many ministers correspond with one another and pray for each other's ministry? And ask God to help each other's ministry and give them a word to say that will win somebody to the Lord or to bless them in their needs. You don't hear it, but they still say, I'm the preacher. God sent me to bear a witness. Where is a witness? They don't do it with deed and truth. Through lifting up each other and praying for each other as a long way we go that we can all rejoice together and live in glory with Him someday when this life is over. We need to think about these things. And 49, and I'll stop with this verse at this time. Remember the word unto thy servant, upon which thou hast caused me to hope. You even ask the Lord to remember the word unto thy servant, to your servant David himself, upon which thou hast caused me to hope. He'll have the same. To us, he will remember his word to us when he said, I'll go with you all the way, even to the end of the world. He will remember that. But we also must do our part as we witness for the Lord and as we journey along towards the end of our journey and walk in his commandments and follow him and ask him to show us the way. If we would do that through a pure heart and clean heart, then one day when he calls us home, we can go to rest, rest in peace, and secure, and knowing that we are in his hands, and know that no man can pluck us out of his hands. And Jesus said, the Father who gave me is greater than all, and no man can pluck them out of my Father's hands. Our most kind and gracious Heavenly Father, it's again we come to you, Lord, with a thankful heart to thank you. One more time, we thank you for these words you have given us. We thank you for these words of the gospel. We thank you, Lord, for your love and your mercy that you have had towards us, that we're still living in this land today. And Lord, I pray, O Lord, today, if there's anyone lost, I pray, Lord, you'll save them today and speak to their heart and send your drawing spirit out to them one more time. And Lord, I pray, Lord, for those who are sick and afflicted in body, you reach down, heal, deliver, touch, and set free. And Lord, I pray, O Lord, you anoint the listeners, anoint every ear, anoint the heart, that we can know that we have been born again and that we are serving a true and a living God. And, Lord, help us all draw closer and closer to you each day because we never know, Lord, when this day will end and that call will come from glory for us to come home. And, Lord, I pray today, Lord, when that hour comes, we can go to sleep in peace and awake at your feet that we can give you praise that we aren't able to give today or we don't know how to give today because, Lord, we're still in the flesh and you are in heaven. But, Lord, when we get there, we'll be in the spirit as you are. Then we can worship you and praise you as long as eternity rolls. 
And Lord, I know many want to go see the loved ones. But Lord, I want to see you first and foremost of all. Because Lord, you're the one that died for me on Calvary's cross. Made it possible for heaven to be my home when this life is over. These things we pray and ask in the wonderful and lovely name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. And thank you, Father, for your love and your mercy.